Cameroon, a place of religious tolerance. Here in Mancon, this harmony relies on the Fon, or sacred king. Gods of football aside, the king mediates between Christians, Muslims, and followers of traditional faiths. He may have, in his youthful days, been religious Christian. There is no hindrance to his becoming fun. But on becoming fun, what do we do once a year as we go to Alanki becomes his main religion. It is a happy event when the king of Mankon goes to Ala Nki. Once a year, the entire court assembles in this sacred place. Only a select few can speak directly with the king. Even the pouring of palm wine is a special privilege. With his drinking horn, the king passes on not only wine, but also a part of himself. The dignitaries go to the graves of the most powerful kings of Mancon. The newly built shelters protect them from the gaze of the curious onlookers. The tradition says that before any big occasion, the phone has to come and commune with his ancestors, tell them his, I mean, his uh, purpose of coming here, what is going to happen, report it to them, and then he will ask them for a blessing, word of illnesses from the place, from among the people. <laughs> Literally translated, Allah Nki means land of water. The nearby river is holy and may only be visited by the king and his priests. Before he does the inauguration, he will go down to the river there <laughs> to be cleansed before he comes and starts the sacrifice. The sound from the elephant tusk is considered the voice of the king. It announces the end of a secretive ritual when the holy river water is carried away in calabashes. The water gives the king a new lease of life which he then symbolically passes on to his followers. Each gift basket is filled according to the size and the status of the family. A bottle of beer is considered a special honour. Everyone from the Achu National Court gets something. The offering of food gives a clear message. The king is considered a source of life, materially as well as spiritually. For this to continue, he needs the water from Allah and Ki. The fawn's water came from that spring. And no person else got water from that place. Now that we're far away, and go there occasionally, we take along calabashes, draw that water back to the palace, and uh, when the phone needs water from bath, a bit of it, a bit of the water collected from that spring is put in that water. According to the traditional culture of iconography, any object can have a spiritual dimension. This idea is the basis for crafts produced by the community. It has nothing to do with idolatry and fetishism, even if many Africans have to defend themselves against such accusations. The Africans had their own way of approach. 
uh, it is not because you call God God that you are right. I call God we, and I think it's the way of my own way of expressing that same idea which you have about God. In Alan Ki, the annual celebrations begin with the tradition of the king passing the power of their ancestors onto the people. But at the great feast of Mankon, the emphasis is on tolerance of all religions. This occasion involves all the religious groups. Therefore, the communal service is most appropriate on that occasion for all the faithfuls of the land. On this solemn occasion, let us listen to the following words of the Apostle Paul to the Philippians. The Lord is near. From Catholic bishops and what are talking about people now? to the most important Imam, the most senior religious dignitaries of the kingdom come to speak. The mountains shall bring peace to the people and the little hills by righteousness. He shall judge the poor of the people. He shall save the children. Lectures and sermons heard together. This celebration shows that different faiths do not have to mark a fundamental separation between people. In times like ours, when conflict is widespread, it is especially important to underline the unity between the different religious groups publicly. Amen with us. The horn, the voice of the king, gives the signal to start the masked dancers. The dancers' masks pay homage to the king, suggesting his strength is like that of an elephant and his wits are like those of a leopard. These dances hark back to a time long before the arrival of the Islamic and Christian missionaries. Yet the wish here is that they might help the king to carry on spreading the message of a religious tolerance deeply rooted in the Cameroonian tradition.